What's going on you guys? Today is Tuesday morning, approximately 10.47 a.m. As you can see, I have a lot of packages that I've already packed up this morning. They're ready to be dropped off at the post office, go into the post office today, so I'm just taking my packages with me. My next errand for the day, since I already got these packages packed up, is going to be something that I've been putting off for a very, very long time. In my opinion, doing what I'm about to do today is crucial to being a responsible business owner. I think it's just good for the, the overall performance of you as a business owner. So I'm, I'm, I'm not putting it off anymore. I'm going to do it. I'm going to talk about it later on in the video. But for right now, we're going to rewind to this morning. I'm going to show you guys all this stuff that I've got pulled, packed, and getting ready to ship out. Had a lot of good sales yesterday. It should be uh, some interesting things for you guys to take a look at. So stick around. So we have eight items going out this morning. So let's get all these things pulled, packed, and shipped out. First item we got going out today is this Patagonia men's short sleeve shirt. It only sold for $20 with free shipping. And I think that's because it did not have a Patagonia logo on the outside of the shirt. The only way you could know that this was Patagonia is by the, by the tag, like it, on the back of the neck. Um, I think a lot of people who like Patagonia like to like to show other people that they're wearing Patagonia. So if this had like a little Patagonia tag on the chest pocket or you know, a, a spell out somewhere. I think it would have sold for a little bit more money, but haven't put it up yet. It's still just in this little bin here. But again, it's just got the Patagonia tag there uh, and Patagonia nowhere else. And it's not, I mean, it's just kind of a green shirt, you know, nothing too exciting. So if you're going to buy Patagonia, look for spell outs and exciting colors. Next item we got going on is this men's Wrangler shirt. Nothing too fancy here. It was really used. It sold for $10 plus shipping and is in, what was it? The B... It's in B1. See the customs, custom label shows it right there, B1. So we know that it is in the B bin and it's item number one, which is right there. Actually, that is not it. That's a master's t-shirt. Oh my gosh. Where is the... Oh, this is it. I had two B1s. I don't know why. Huh. That's interesting. Well, I'm not cutting this part out of the video. Like sometimes that happens. I'm just an idiot, I guess. Uh, but yeah, it's a cool, cool Wrangler shirt. It's just kind of old and it's been sitting in my store for like eight months. So somebody sent me an offer of 10 bucks and I just went ahead and accepted it. And both of these shirts I paid 475 for. So on this shirt, I'm probably making like three bucks in profit. And on that shirt, I'm probably making like, I don't know, five or six bucks in profit, something like that. Hey Mo's, how are you? You want to go back inside? Love you so much. This next item is in the M bin and it's item number 11. So then we just pull it open and look for 11, which I think... Should be back here. This is the second Under Armour jacket. I sold this first Under Armour jacket that I picked up at TJ Maxx, um, I don't know, like a month month ago or so. And I had one left. Somebody sent me an offer of 45 bucks free shipping. Um, I think I paid $40 for the jacket at TJ Maxx. I'm pretty sure it was $40. So not making any money. I'm just kind of moving this thing out. Again, it's been sitting for probably four months, four or five months, and it's getting close to the end of winter. So I'm just trying to move out some jackets, liquidate some of my some of my inventory. I'm probably losing a few dollars on this, but uh, you know, that's what you gotta do sometimes to learn your lesson. I'm probably gonna think twice before I spend $40 on a lightweight Under Armour jacket. Next item is this pair of men's Sperry boat shoes. These are like a blue green boat shoe. They're in really good condition. Uh, just kind of a weird colorway. I was expecting these to sell like around Easter or something. Uh, but somebody sent me an offer of 19 bucks on these plus shipping. And I went ahead and accepted it. I paid uh, $6.50 for these. Um, so, you know, $6.50 into 19 bucks after fees. You're a little bit more than doubling your money. And I'm moving out some shoes. As, as you can see, I have a ton of shoes. So pretty much if I get an offer on a pair of shoes and I'm at least doubling my money, I'm probably going to accept it because I have all these shoes currently listed and I have all those shoes still that I have to list. So if I can double my money on a pair, you're getting it at a deal. Next item that I sold is this Panasonic bath fan. And for those of you that don't know, this is part of a consignment agreement I have with a guy at my church. Uh, so basically he runs like a, um, like a business uh, building supply company or something like that. And they had a lot of these fans left over from an apartment complex build. And he asked me if I could sell them on eBay for him. The best part about these fans is that they're already, they already come in a box like this. So when they sell, all I have to do is print off a label, stick it on the box and drop it off at the FedEx location. It's super, super easy. So the split on this is 75, 25, he gets 75%, I get 25%. So, uh, this one sold for a hundred bucks. I accepted a best offer, a hundred bucks plus shipping. So probably making, 
you know, maybe 20 bucks after fees and, and the, and you're paying him at 75% and everything. But again, I don't have to pack anything. I don't have to box anything. All I do is stick a label on it, drop it at the FedEx location. Next time going out is this hairspray. This lady bought two orders of these. So she bought four cans and used two cans in one order. And she spent $69 and 98 cents free shipping on four cans. So I had these boxed up already in orders of two. And I thought about the other boxes like down there. So I only have two boxes bagged up right now, but I thought about just wrapping the two together in plastic wrap and shipping them. But I think I can fit both, like all four cans in one of these boxes. So we're gonna try that. Those are the two cans already in the box and I have two more cans here. And as you can see, they still have the price tag on them. I paid 92 cents a piece. And as I just showed you on my phone, she bought four cans for almost $70. So this hairspray fund was just a, almost a once in a lifetime deal, man. I just, it was such a great find. I found 150 cans of this at Goodwill, paid 92 cents each. Uh, so I think I was all in like $138 or so. I've already, I think I've already like quadrupled my money. I've sold most of them. I think I have maybe 50 cans left, maybe. Uh, I don't know exactly, but it's just a great, great money maker. Really good find on this hairspray. So I was able to fit all four cans of hairspray in that one box. And the next item we got going out is this Carhartt jacket. This is the one that that lady at the Benz uh, gave me. <laughs> like she just came up and, and just straight handed it to me. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it at all. It's in pretty much mint condition. I listed this jacket yesterday around 2 p.m. and it sold around 5 p.m. So it was only listed for three hours. I was asking $50 plus shipping and that is exactly what it sold for, 50 bucks plus shipping. So I got everything packed up and ready to put labels on. You can see all the shirts are just going in poly bags first class. That's the hat that I put in an eight by six by four box. Uh, these are those Sperry shoes, which are just gonna ship priority. The hairspray, all four kinds of hairsprays in that box and anything flammable or alcohol based like hairspray or perfume, aerosols, things like that. You have to ship those with uh, USPS parcel select. Now, the only thing we have left in question is this Carhartt jacket. I was able to fold it up and kind of squeeze it in one of these, uh, whatever box this is. Uh, we can use the same box and compare the rate to ship this jacket with pirate ship or uh, through eBay. So looking at eBay, this package weighs three pounds, 14 ounces. The dimensions of the box are roughly 15.5 by 12.5 by three. So we're gonna update this to make sure everything's still good. And you can see shipping at USPS priority would cost us $17.60. So let's go to Pirate Ship and see if we can save any money. So for Pirate Ship, we got the same thing going on. We got a box, 15.5 by 12.5 by three, same dimensions. And the weight of the package is three pounds and 14 ounces. So we're gonna go down here to click get rates. So as you can see here, it'll go priority mail cubic and it will cost us only $16.02. So not a ton of savings, but using the same box, I mean, we're saving what, a dollar and 1760 to 1602. We're saving like a dollar and 58 cents or something. If you do that 10 times a day, it really adds up. So we're gonna go ahead and buy the label through Pirate Ship. So got all that stuff boxed and, and labeled ready to go out, but I just made another sale. Got this nice little uh, leather jacket. I don't know if you can see that or not, but uh, it sold for $42.98, basically free shipping because it was, I think that it sold for $29 plus shipping. Uh, so either way, we'll get this pulled, packed, and shipped out along with the other stuff. So yeah, it was $28 plus shipping and the buyer paid $12.55 for shipping. She sent me a message and she was like, can you please put this in a padded flat rate envelope so we can shave, save on some shipping costs? And I'm like, uh, I don't think this like thick leather jacket is going to fit in a padded flat rate envelope. And she was like, can you just, can you just try, just shove it in there. And I'm like, okay, lady, like this is the, this is the jacket. I've got it rolled up, like basically as tight as it'll go. And that's a padded flat rate envelope under there. Like this, there's no way this thing's going to fit in a padded flat rate envelope. So a uh, lady who bought this jacket, I'm not trying to jip you out of shipping. It's just not like this jacket is not going to fit in this envelope. It's just not going to happen. So for everything I showed you in this video, our gross sales amount was $408.16. I multiply this top amount by 0.88, which accounts for saving 9% towards eBay fees. Since I'm a top rated plus seller, I only pay 9% instead of 10. If you are not a top rated seller, you should multiply this amount by 0.87. Multiplying this amount by my 0.88 gives me a total after fees of $359.18. So we spent 1031 shipping the leather jacket on Pirate Ship, 1602 shipping that Carhartt jacket, and 5544 shipping everything else through eBay, which gives us a total shipping cost for today of $81.77. Taking our current amount of money minus the shipping fees leaves us with $277.41.
The cost of goods for everything I showed you in today's video was $96.25 and $66 of this is the consignment fee that I have to pay to that guy who owns the building supply company to basically buy the fan from him. So I'm basically buying these fans about $60 to $70 a piece and selling them for $100. So that's, that's the way the financial aspect of this deal works out. So taking the 277.41 we currently have, subtracting the 96.25 in cost of goods, leaves us with a total net profit of $181.16, just from things we sold yesterday, which was Monday, plus that one jacket we sold this morning. So I keep trying to move on to the next part of my day, but I keep selling stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and get this shipped out today. This is a Kavu bag. Got it at the bins, probably paid $1.54. It. It's pretty lightweight. And this sold to a viewer named Casey Harris. And Casey says... Uh, Thanks for all the great advice from YouTube. So Casey, thank you so much for, for buying this bag. I appreciate it. I did have this going into a padded flat rate envelope. I'm not sure why, because this is pretty lightweight. So Casey, you already paid for shipping in a padded flat rate envelope. So I'm going to send this to you with $3 in the bag uh, because the actual shipping price is only going to be $3.97. So you already paid like eight bucks or whatever. Uh, so thank you for watching the channel. Enjoy the $3. Don't spend it all in one place. So I checked my mail yesterday and I got two packages and some postcards. So I'm going to read the postcards in a second, but I already opened the packages yesterday because I wasn't sure what, what they were. Uh, and I am very, very satisfied. So this first one is from Linda Scott from Little Rock, Arkansas. And she sent me this really cool Dunder Mifflin backpack. I remember she was in the, I don't remember her YouTube name, but she was in the, the live chat last week. And she asked me if I had a Dunder Mifflin backpack. I said no. So she sent me one. So uh, Linda, thank you so much. This is an awesome, awesome backpack. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to start using this one instead of that black one I always use. So you will forever be in the future of my YouTube channel as far as my backpack is concerned. So thank you so much. This next item is from Javier Torres. I think his actual name is Daniel Torres, but I'm just going off the, the package what was in the box and there wasn't a letter or anything. So I'm going to say Javier, but I'm pretty sure it's Daniel, which I'm pretty sure his YouTube name is like Art Vandalay 219 or 216 or something. Um, but he sent me this Prison Mike Funko Pop. If this is the same guy um, who sent me this uh, Dwight, Schrute Punko, uh, Dwight Schrute Funko Pop uh, in my live show last week, I was talking about this. I thanked him for it. And I mentioned that I used to have the Prison Mike one and I sold it and I wish I wouldn't have. So he sent me <laughs> the Prison Mike Funko Pop that I wanted. So Javier or Daniel, if that's your real name, uh, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate this. This is going right back on the shelf. Okay, so now we can look at some postcards. This first one has a picture of cats on it some, somehow. And it says, hey, Josh, I want, to, I want to be your first card from New Mexico. I'm a recent subscriber and really enjoy your videos. Very informative, and you have such a nice personality. Best of luck to you, Josh. Teresa Ash, Ashcroft from Aztec, New Mexico. So, Teresa, thank you so much. I'll put a pin in Aztec, New Mexico. Next one, this says, uh, this tree marks a spot where Dr. Crawford, uh, Jefferson, Georgia, Jackson County in Jefferson, Georgia. Uh, and this is from the McIntyres. And they say, hey, Josh, this is Melanie and Dwayne from Jefferson, Georgia. We enjoy your videos and you are one of our favorites to watch. We took an hour and a half trip a couple weeks ago to Greenville, South Carolina to the Goodwill outlet, found lots of great things. It was a fun trip and we wish we had one closer to us. I appreciate the work you do to make these videos. We're hoping to start our own channel soon. Thanks and have an awesome day, the McIntyres. So Melanie and Dwayne, thank you so much for this and I will put a pin in Jefferson, Georgia. This next one is from John Glass from Concord, Virginia. He says, hey Harry, we watch your show often. It's very entertaining. We used to do what you do 10 years ago. I've learned a lot from you. Keep up the good work. Thanks, John. So John, Thank you so much for this. You, again, you're from Concord, Virginia, so I will put a pin in that one. And then this one, this one is very interesting. So this one looked a little different. It said airmail on it. And this is from, please forgive me if I mispronounce this name. It's either Jekaterina or Jekaterina. It's J-E-K-A-T-E-R-I-N-A. -E I think it's Jekaterina, maybe, I don't know. But uh, she is from London, United Kingdom. So this came all the way across the pond. Jekaterina, I have not opened this yet, so let's take a gander at it and then we'll figure out how to put a pin in London when I only have a map of the United States. Look at that. Look at that London. That is nice. Sweet. Okay, so it says, greetings all the way from London, UK. I'm also a reseller on eBay UK and I find your videos interesting and educational. 
love videos when you visit Goodwill stores. Is this the first postcard from your board from outside the U.S.? Yes, it is so far. Andy Lepra said he was going to send me one from India, but I haven't gotten that one yet. Would love to visit United States one day. Please, could you give a shout out to my kids, Nolly and Macy? Thanks, XXX. Again, forgive me if I'm mispronouncing names, but shout out to Nolly and Macy. You guys are awesome, and your mom is awesome for sending me this card. So, um, I guess I'll print out a picture of the UK and then put a pin in London because that's the only thing I can do. So we might have to start a new wall or something. So I printed off this picture of the map of England, but I accidentally printed it on a sheet of 30 up address labels. <laughs> if you can see, there's like 30 labels that I could peel off on this thing. Uh, and it used a lot of ink, so I'm not going to reprint it. So it's just going to be forever printed on a sheet of labels. But uh, London is right down here. So I will put a little pin in London. And then I'll put a, uh, put, I'll just, I don't, do you think my wife is going to be mad? I think Ailey's going to be really mad if I just start putting this stuff on the wall, but, uh, I don't have another option. <laughs> so it's fine. It's fine. We own the house. We could do whatever we want. So Jacaterina, thank you so much. I really appreciate this. Sending me a postcard all the way from London. You're the best. Also, you other three people that sent me postcards today, Teresa, John, and the McIntyres. Thank you so much. I will put pins in your locations. And again, if you guys want to send me postcards to fill up the board, there's what it looks like. And if you're not in the USA, I'll just print off a map of your country and stick it on the wall. Look at all this wall space. We can do the whole world. And now we are back to where the video first started. I wanna to talk to you guys about what I just did and how important I think it is for a business owner. So if you remember, I used to do a morning show with a lot of Josh and Suburban Beard. And in one of the episodes near the end of the year last year, we talked about our goals for 2020 in terms of our business and health and finances and everything. And my three goals for 2020 was I don't remember exactly what I said about my business, but just, you know, list stuff and get more sales and you know, grow my YouTube channel, which I have done <laughs> very successfully so far. Thanks to you guys. You guys are awesome. One of my other goals was to read the entire Bible. This is just a personal goal of mine. I started off kind of slow, but now I've been reading every day, three chapters a day for the last like 14 or 15 days. So that's going well as well. However, my third goal was a health and fitness goal. I want to lose 25 pounds this year. I'm currently about 200 pounds, which is fairly heavy. I'm, I'm a pretty short guy. So I just, I've been skinnier before. I got down to like 165 at my very skinniest. And I just felt a lot better at that point in my life. Right when I was around like 170, 175 pounds was like perfect, I feel like. So my goal for this year was to get back down to that weight. However, we are now like almost through the whole month of January and I have not worked out a single time. And I know like in the back of my head how important it is to take care of your health and fitness because if you if you focus on that and you focus on your health first, it's just gonna make you a better business owner down the road. You know, like waking up first thing in the morning and, and just skipping breakfast and going straight into packing orders or eating a really unhealthy breakfast on the way to a thrift store or something is just not a good way to start off your day in my opinion. And that's basically what I've been doing for the whole month of January. So today I finally decided to just bite the bullet and start this journey again. I, like I said, I've been like five or six years ago, I lost like 60 pounds. I was really like obsessed with working out and, and being healthy and I was successful at it, but I need to find a way to do it on a more sustainable basis. I mean, I was going to the gym twice a day. Some days I was playing ultimate Frisbee three, four, five days a week. And it was just taking up a lot of time and it was fun. Like I was seeing results really, really quickly. I had one month where I lost 19 pounds and even my doctor was like, Hey, maybe you should <laughs> chill out for a second. So I don't want to do it to that level of intensity, but I know in order to be a better business owner and be a, a just a healthier human overall, I need to start working out more. So I went back to planet fitness. I started my membership back $10 a month. It's super cheap, but that means it's super crowded as well. So I just did some time on the treadmill, lifted some weights a little bit and it's not much. I know it's scientific. Like I've experienced it before. I know that if I keep doing this, I'm going to feel better on the inside and look better on the outside. And I don't understand why it's so hard for my brain to like get motivated to work out when I know for a fact that it will work. It's just, it just sucks, man. Like I just hate working out, but I, like I said, I'm just going to bite the bullet. I'm just going to keep doing it. I'm going to you know mention this in some videos here and there to make sure you you know, you guys are kind of keeping me accountable. I want to be the best business owner I can be. I want to be the best husband I can be. I want to be, you know, as healthy as I can be. But I'm not going to get there if I just wake up every morning and immediately start thinking about my business. I've got to put my health and, and fitness up there in the priority as well. You know, I've just done some research and I've spent time watching other 
other professional resellers and other just successful business owners in general. And I'm seeing that there's a strong correlation between success in business and an overall healthy level of fitness. I'm not saying that you can't run a successful business if you are not healthy. I just think it would help significantly. So anyway, I'm done ranting for the day. I gotta take this stuff to the post office. Might hit some thrift stores or something, but I'm gonna cut the video off here today. That's enough info for one video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate your time tremendously. You're the best, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.